Hello and welcome to another video in the Dell Virtual Volume video series. In this video we'll observe one of the benefits of virtual volumes, rapid virtual machine deployment. This useful benefit of virtual volumes significantly reduces the amount of productive work time lost to waiting for the simple task to finish. But first a quick review of virtual volumes to help understand how it works. Virtual volumes is a change in how storage handles virtual machines. No longer does the hypervisor treat storage as a shared hard drive, but it leverages the intelligence within the array. With virtual volumes, the hypervisor becomes more aware of the array and its capabilities, and the array becomes more aware of what it is storing and provides targeted services. So how is this rapid deployment done? Well, let's look at how a virtual machine changes from when it's stored on a VMFS data store to when it's stored on a data store of type VVOL. So what is a virtual machine? Traditionally, a virtual machine has consisted of a few files, primarily a VMX file, which defines the virtual machine, and a VMDK file, which is the virtual machine's hard disk. Along with the VSwap file and the log files, they are all organized inside a folder and stored on a VMFS formatted volume along with other virtual machines. With virtual volumes, all this changes. The same virtual machine is now a group of volumes on the array, with a small config volume for the virtual machine's VMX file and log files, a data volume replaces the VMDK, and when the virtual machine is powered on, a VSwap volume. So how does this benefit you when deploying a new virtual machine? Well, the task of deploying the virtual machine is no longer a copy operation performed by ESXi up and down the storage stack, but becomes a volume clone operation performed by the array. After all, the virtual machine is now a group of volumes on the array, and arrays are designed to manipulate volumes in many ways, including cloning them. Let's see this in action. Deploying one virtual machine is not that exciting, so instead, I wrote a PowerShell script that runs through a for loop 100 times and calls the new virtual machine command each time. Not a very complex script, but sufficient for this quick demo. Let's kick the script off and take note of the start time in Virtual Center. Now, rather than watch 100 virtual machines deploy, let's speed things up a bit. It is important to note that from within the vSphere client, you may not notice these UI changes as VMware has maintained the same workflows for these tasks and made only minimal UI changes for virtual volumes. All the changes and magic are under the hood. So that is 100 virtual machines deployed, with the last virtual machine completing the task at just shy of 3.20 p.m. I started the script at 3.16.48, so just over 3 minutes for 100 virtual machines to be deployed, which works out at under 2 seconds per virtual machine. Not bad at all. Delivering virtual machines in a shorter time frame enables IT to run more efficiently and respond quicker to the ever-changing needs of the business they support. Whether the needs are to expand a virtual desktop environment or deploy a new web farm, rapid deployment will get the task done quicker. No discussion about virtual volumes is possible without taking a quick look at the array. From here we can see each of the virtual machines we created, and in the lower half of the GUI you can see the individual volumes that make up an individual virtual machine. With a virtual machine now being a group of volumes on the array, this opens up many options for vSphere to offload to the array beyond rapid deployment, including better performing array-based snapshots and granular per VMDK I.O. performance monitoring, which will be covered in later videos. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video and found it informative. For more information about virtual volumes, visit dell.com slash virtual volumes. For free access to a virtual volume self-paced lab, visit the VMware hands-on lab at hol.vmware.com and search for Dell.